the human brain is estimated to have 80 billion neurons and each of them is connected to approximately 10,000 to 100,000 other neurons. So that is a network that we have inside our heads which is bigger than the entire internet of the world. Why is it important to understand how the brain works? Well, uh, there's th three reasons. One is uh, our own scientific curiosity, because the brain generates the mind. So all of our mental abilities, they don't come out of thin air. They're actually a result. We know this for sure. They result from the activity of these neural circuits that we have in, in our heads, not from these billions of, of neurons. And the second reason is to uh, help patients that suffer from mental or neurological diseases. So this is a, a large proportion of, of uh, humanity. Um, as uh, every viewer uh, knows from either family members or, f or friends, these um, um, brain-related diseases, it could be schizophrenia, Parkinson, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, they have no cure mental retardation, there's nothing we can do. Today, in spite of the heroic efforts of psychiatrists or neurologists, it's, they're fighting with their hands tied behind their backs because we don't understand the mechanisms of the brain, so we cannot fix them with a brick. So that's why it's critical to have tools, not just to observe the activity of the brain and map it, but also to go in and change it so that we can go and help these people. And then the third reason is actually economic. It has to do with the technology. So, for instance, the current, um, uh, we live in the, in the middle of a uh, technological revolution that is changing the world, and this is based on the digital computers. Uh, and the digital computers are machines that work following a particular type of algorithms uh, that are based on uh, some very uh, loose understanding of what goes on in a neural network that we have in, the, in our heads. So, so these neural networks are in the future could be much more uh, powerful if they use the tricks and algorithms that nature must have built, uh, not just in our brains, but in the brains of animals. So it's very likely that if we understood how the brain works, this would lead to a, um, a revolution in our, in our technology that could be like a, like a new industrial revolution. If we can understand, if we can decode this neural code, we'll be able to understand what goes on in our heads. So that means that you can, in principle, read the, the, the minds of people and understand what they're thinking of, of animals, and, uh, and we are an animal, and what we want to do and our, our memory. So, so uh, I always thought this was like science fiction in the future. Sometimes it will happen. You see all these movies. Uh, but then, uh, as the brain should have happened, uh, I thought, that, well, maybe there should be this ethical component should be a strong part of this uh, new, uh, new initiative. We, we essentially came up with a short list of, of uh, fundamental um, uh, guidelines, which uh, we call neuro rights, because we think these are human rights that should protect people from the abuses of the neurotechnology and artificial intelligence. Technology is neutral. You can use it for good or for bad. And you can think of medicine also as neutral. You can use the medical knowledge to hurt people or to help people. And every doctor, all through our history, in all cultures, in all countries, has always uh, developed this altruistic uh, um, bend. No? So I'm just bringing into, into neurotechnology and hopefully into AI this uh, Hippocratic model so that moving forward, these tools that are so important that can change our society should be developed with uh, the goal of really helping uh, humankind. It's about understanding ourselves from the inside. And I would compare this to the Renaissance. So what happened in the Renaissance at the end of the, the, the Middle Ages is that uh, humans start to really try to understand our body. And we look at our body and the Renaissance and we start um, deciphering what different parts of the body are good for and we understand similarity between human and animals. And back then there was a big uh, current against uh, this uh, 
uh, thirst for knowledge about ourselves because people argue that this would dehumanize uh, uh, the humans, human body, uh, dehumanize the, the creation of God. No? But it was the opposite. No? The more we understood how the, the human body worked, uh, that led to essentially conceptual revolution that, that brought along the, the Renaissance. No? It was an explosion of, uh, of knowledge, uh, catapulting humanity forward that uh, uh, changed in a way our society, our art, our science, of course, no? our medicine for the good. No? And uh, this uh, knowledge is, is always good. Uh, it dispels away the old prejudices. And I can imagine that we're just at the brink of a new, a uh, second renaissance. And this time, instead of understanding the body, we're going to understand our mind.